we lived with my mom and so living with her wasn't too good because she never really looked after us how you a mom should. Uh, the last time I saw my mom was probably about four years old. So I live with my grandma and grandpa So because my dad passed away. So my grandma and grandpa adopted me and that's basically my family. My grandpa found out about Arupe through uh, the newspaper actually. I think they won some sort of scholarship or something. Just my grandpa wanted me to come to school so you have to take a placement test, to see how your finances and everything are. And at first I got denied to come to the school. And so he was really devastated at first, but then he talked to the school owners telling him it shouldn't be his fault that he was placed with us. It's just with a situation that he was faced. He wrote letters, he had people write letters for him, and eventually the school said, all right, well, I think he, he'll do good here. And a uh, Rupi Jesuit is similar to a private school. The Arupi students always come and do a practice day all together um, for their first day of school. When we first met Andrew, there were him as well as three other students. In order to get their tuition paid, they work one day a week for companies like ourselves. We actually have four students that work one day a week and then they rotate Mondays, so we have a full schedule of students work-study program I think is really unique. It's, it's unique in that it's not a handout to these students. We're giving them an opportunity to come to work, but it's um, really neat to see them earn that opportunity and really thrive in a corporate work environment that they wouldn't otherwise be uh, able to participate in and um, pay for a great education. You know, we get involved with different charities every year. Last year, uh, we had a lot of involvement with the Denver Children's Home, with Seeds of Hope, with Adams Camp, and Arupe. We just believe that uh, it's our responsibility to give back to the community, and, uh, and you know, it, it just provides a lot of fulfillment to me, and I know to all our employees, I, I hope to get involved with the communities that we serve. Adams Camp provides um, for those children that have special needs and it's just a phenomenal organization that several at Hercules have been involved with for many years. Adams Camp was founded in 1986 by Bob and Carol Horney who are the father and mother of Adam who the camp is named after. Adam was born with cerebral palsy and at the time he was about five years old they needed he needed to be able to walk so he wouldn't have to go to school in a wheelchair. So they came up with an idea with his physical therapist. So they worked together for five straight days. Uh, and by the end of that time, Adam was able to walk on his own uh, and he didn't need to go to school in a wheelchair. So they really thought that they were on to something. They went up to the mountains to do this, uh, to kind of get away from everything and realized there were a lot of side benefits to that, not only for Adam, but for the whole family. It kind of rejuvenated the whole family. So with that concept in mind, they just, they, they decided to um, expanded to new families who were in the kind of the same situation as them since they had enjoyed success with it. Uh, and it's grown steadily since then. Uh, last summer we, we served about um, close to 500 uh, campers in the summer through our summer camps and um, it, it's just a wonderful program uh, that all started with uh, their overwhelming desire to help their son. So similar to Adams Camp um, and providing for children with special needs, the Denver Children's Home is really a unique organization providing for children in really tight spot um, with, without a place to live and often rejected by many foster homes. So Denver Children's Home is the oldest nonprofit in the state of Colorado. We've been serving children and families in need since 1876 and we were founded by the founding mothers of the state, the political and business leaders' wives. And what was unique about Denver Orphans Home when we were founded, the founding mothers of the state said it's not one religion's responsibility to care for children in need, it's the communities. And so what's been amazing in our 140 year history is how heavily we continue to rely on community support to take care of kids and families with the greatest needs, those that people have given up on. Um, we treat severely traumatized, abused, and neglected kids and families with mental health issues. Um, and we tend to be a placement of last resort. So we're the place that kids come after they have failed and failed. And that's sort of our kind of kid, um, 10 to 18 year olds that, you know, they have their issues, but 
they're amazingly resilient and inspirational and they're fabulous. They're the best part. So that's what we get to do. Also resonating with our desire to help underprivileged kids is um, Seeds of Hope, which is a great organization allowing young children to obtain a better education than they may otherwise be afforded in the local public school system. Seeds of Hope is celebrating its 20th anniversary this year and since the beginning we have been uh, supporting students attending our inner city Catholic grade schools. So we are supporting that mission of providing a safe environment, an excellent faith-based education to families who really desire it but in areas of our city that aren't as prosperous as others and so Seeds of Hope has been able to um, provide the resources for that gap for literally thousands of students over the last 20 years. What we do is provide need-based financial assistance. So we don't look at test scores or grades. Um, many of our families really struggle with their home situations, uh, you know, from a wide variety of factors, um, especially given the current housing environment and, and what it means for some of our families living near the schools in inner city Denver and, and being crowded out of those areas. So we have a very, very low overhead at Seeds of Hope um, because we believe strongly in supporting our students to the maximum level. Uh, the students benefiting from Seeds of Hope often feed into a Rupe Jesuit High School where Andrew attends. Well, Rupe Jesuit is a Jesuit Catholic college preparatory school, and so we have a unique work study program that enables us to provide this very expensive Jesuit Catholic college preparatory education for families who cannot afford to pay much tuition. And so we serve exclusively uh, families, income generally have to be at poverty level or below. 85 to 90 percent of our students qualify for the federal free and reduced lunch program. Uh, the way we're able to do this is every student in the school has a job at one of 120 different uh, corporate partners around the Denver area, Hercules Industries being one of them. Uh, and so four students share an entry-level clerical job at these businesses and their salary for that job comes to the school directly and pays about 50% of the cost of running the school. It's hard work to be a kid at the school. You have to work hard, you know, because every kid shows up for, for school work and it's very demanding college curriculum, college prep curriculum. And then they work five days a month at a full-time job, you know, uh, 8 to 4.30 or, you know, 9 to 5. Uh, and they come home and then they have to go home and do homework after they've worked for a full day. Uh, when I go home, I, I first have, my grandpa always has a strict rule of get your homework done first before you do anything else. So I get my homework done and then, then I get to do what I want, so. Our son, Eugene, and his mother, uh, Tina, didn't comply, I guess, with what they were supposed to comply with. Well, our son was in prison, so he couldn't take care of him. And Tina didn't comply, so he was going to be adopted. Um, and we didn't want him to go to um, another family that wasn't, you know, part of the family, any strangers. So we decided that we, we were going to adopt him. We had heard through the church, different people, what a, what a good education it would be. He had an interview, and with that interview, was able to convince him that he would be going to school to better himself. I think he said to make his grandma and grandpa proud. I wish that I was able to put into words what it meant. I, th I think the education here is great, but my favorite class is probably math. Just because I like the way a teacher teaches it, but the transition from a public school to this school is a lot different. And coming here, you come to a dress code. I never was in a work. I never worked before in an actual job. I come here, you get a job. So a lot of differences. Andrew showed interest in computers, so he came down and worked with the IT department. All the Arupe kids that have worked with us are really good, and especially Andrew. He's always here on time. He always works hard. He's 
a good kid. Um, going to Arupe offers me a variety of opportunities, which really helped me and where I want to go is being an entrepreneur, such as working at Hercules Industries. And so it just means a lot because once I, I take the next step to, to where I want to go, then I get to be, then I get to use these skills that I've learned here to put it towards where I want to go in life. They helped me get a full ride scholarship called the Daniels Fund. And uh, I actually just made my decision uh, on Monday that I'm gonna attend the University of Denver with the Daniels Fund Scholarship. At Hercules, we know that to those whom much is entrusted, much is expected. This is why we think it is extremely important to be involved with local charitable organizations. I often get the personal satisfaction of being able to deliver funds to these organizations and get to see firsthand the impact that we are making on people's lives. It is not me, however, that makes this possible. The work that each and every one of you do is not only providing for you and your families, but it also makes it possible for us as an organization to make an impact on the local communities that we serve. I hope this video helps to connect the work that you do on a daily basis to the impact that we as an organization are making in our local communities. Every person in this company is making a difference in improving the lives of others. For some, this may even prompt you to get involved in one of these organizations or any other local organization in your community. We highly support community involvement by our employees and even offer paid time off for time spent volunteering with local charities. Please see your manager if you'd like more details. So thank you on behalf of all of these great organizations for all that you do.